Given enough time, these randomly swirling shapes will do something very clever. They will stick together, assembling themselves into the same lattice structure every time. It's their shape and the position of the magnets on their sides that guarantees that self-same pattern. Welcome to the world of self-assembling materials. If we look at the processes of assembly outside of the human scale, how planets form, or we look at very small scales, chemistry, biology, physics in general, it's very different than how we build at human scales. And so we're interested in an alternate process, uh, maybe something that opens up construction possibilities where it's dangerous or where it's difficult today. It's a very hot topic these days. And here at MIT, I've come to see the start of making that science fiction into fact. Skylar Tibbetts has been working on all kinds of materials that can go from a random clump to a predetermined shape. All that you need is to apply a little energy. Maybe it can be powered through change in temperature or sunlight or moisture. Or the turbulence of water, which can, over several hours, bump and tumble this clump of parts into a chair. The secret, again, is that particular combination of magnets and the unique locking pattern on each end of each piece. They only fit together one way. We're proposing that we can do this at larger scales. Products, electronic components that can assemble themselves, or even large structures like infrastructure and buildings and space stations. Bearing separation. Uh, the other category is our programmable materials, and that's looking at new forms of products, products where the materials are more adaptive and transform themselves on the fly to adapt to the environment, the user, different scenarios. Printing a layer of special material to carbon fibre will make it curl in a particular direction when exposed to heat, allowing, for example, aircraft parts to change shape at different speeds and altitudes. This is not a world of intelligent materials, not yet, but it's certainly a step towards a future where design is not left completely to the human designers. In the future, we're thinking that machines could be a collaborator and that you don't necessarily send the end result, but that machine proposes a result that you haven't sent it, meaning the machine proposes a solution, a design solution that's potentially better than you could have come up with. 